Hi, I'm Mitch, and my site is terrainosaur.com. I really enjoy painting miniatures. It started for role-playing games and then war games, but then it became a hobby all of its own. Now I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Eventually, Parkinson's will rob me of the ability to paint. Tremors are common, but it also causes loss of balance, involuntary movement, stiffness, and freezing. There's no cure for it, but there is effective treatment. Michael J. Fox has Parkinson's, and he says it's the gift that keeps on taking. What he means by that is we lose ability and functionality as the disease progresses. It also causes cluttered speech, which is making recording this video really difficult right now. I've already lost the ability to drive. My hands are too shaky for the wheel. I wake up shaking. I often have trouble getting to sleep because I'm shaking too much, and I sometimes have to stop crafting because I'm weaving around too much or my leg is shaking too much. My left hand is wrecked. I've lost almost all fine mobility with it. Sometimes I give it commands and it does nothing. I'm working around my symptoms to continue painting. What I've learned and what I've researched may help others. Maybe they could learn to paint or maybe they could get back into painting. This video is about brush control and steadying yourself. When you watch an expert, you probably naturally watch the miniature or the paintbrush. I watch their hands. Let's start with painting on canvas. For ages, painters have used a mall stick to brace and avoid touching the canvas. Here's a man holding a mall stick. His right hand is out in the air, which isn't great. If his right hand is unreliable or shaky, this wouldn't help much. Here's a woman using one. It looks like she has it tucked under her left arm. The purpose is clear here, though. The dominant hand isn't out in the open air. And here's Salvador Dali using a mall stick. And M.C. Escher. The point isn't that you should use a mall stick. My point is you should always brace your hands. When painting miniatures, you should always use a holder, too. Here's the basic pose. This is Darren Latham, a professional painter and sculptor for Games Workshop. Offhand with the miniature holder, dominant hand with the brush. The outer fingers of the painting hand are braced against the holder. This is Duncan Rhodes using the same basic technique. I brace with my right finger too. The only thing that you should move is your painting fingers. Then it gets tricky. Darren Latham doesn't usually do any tricky bracing, but here he is flipping the miniature upside down and bracing it against the miniature itself. This is rare. It's almost a golden rule to never touch the miniature, something about oils in your skin. But he's being very careful here. Juan Hidalgo holds his hands way down off camera, so I had to go through a lot of his videos to get a clear look at his bracing. Hand against hand is a good option to try, as it might steady both of them. Sometimes this really works for me. I picked a random pro with a lot of views. Ben Comet doesn't deviate much from the basic pose. Here he's glazing from top down and heavily braced. Here's good old Brent from Goobertown. He's almost got his offhand wrapped around the miniature and is bracing against his thumb. I've done that. The absolute master of convoluted bracing, though, is Duncan Rhodes. Here he's pushing on the back of the miniature with his offhand and using his outer fingers to touch the miniature. He actually does this all the time. This one, though, what the hell, Duncan? All five fingers of your right hand are involved. This actually makes it worse for me. And here we have the lock-picking lawyer. Even he braces his fingers when doing delicate work. Bet you didn't see that coming. Now, not to be critical, but I watched a video of someone who'd never painted before. This is Kira from Broadsword Wargaming. Here, both hands are free out in the open air. That's bad. Don't do that. She naturally starts bracing one hand against another. That's good. A miniature holder and some practice would make painting easier for her. To repeat, she's new, so I'm not seriously criticizing her. This is just an example to put the professionals in perspective. I have tremors, of course, the characteristic symptom of Parkinson's, mostly in my left hand, a little bit in my right. That's why in early videos, I kept my left arm out of the picture so that people wouldn't ask so many questions about it. But some people noticed. I also have dyskinesia, which is involuntary muscle movements or spasms. Mine are in my neck, which pulls back like this and is difficult to stop. Sometimes a little bit of posture change will make my head tilt forward correctly. And the other is my right leg shakes constantly, which is why I don't put my right hand on my knee when I'm shooting videos, because it looks like this. I don't think people would understand that unless I explained it to them. So that was bracing. Some people call it anchoring or steadying. They're all the same thing. That's great. 
All it is is an attempt to eliminate factors from the equation when painting that will cause lo loss of brush control. So let's talk about posture. As far as I know, there are two positions to sit in when painting miniatures. You're looking at one of them, elbows on the table, miniature on a holder in your offhand, paintbrush held like a pencil in your dominant hand. This is the go-to uh, move for most people um, and, and works pretty well. This is troublesome for me because there's a lot of things that can move here. Even my right leg shaking, which it's doing really vigorously right now, can move me around. This is not great for me. The other one is what I call wrist on ribs, and that's leaning all the way back and doing this. Um, I think you can probably see on camera that I'm already uh, in more control. So if you lean really far back, you're just taking everything out of the equation. Here is Jeremy from Black Magic Craft. He said he has tremors, and after watching this video, he ain't kidding. But he said this wrist on rib style works for him. If you have shaky hands and you've done any research, you've probably heard about the rubber band method. I'll show you what that is. It didn't really work for me, but I've seen YouTube videos where it did work and where it didn't work. So here's what you do. I've got two different kinds of rubber bands here. One is a big one and one of them is just two of them put together. They both work the same. So what you do is you put it on your wrist, do a figure eight, wrap it around two or three of your fingers on your painting hand like this so that it pulls the fingers back. Then you can still pick up the brush and paint with it in whatever position you're going to. And then that will supposedly reduce tremors. The problem is it depends on where your tremors are. If, they're in your, if these fingers are shaking, causing these fingers to shake, that's what I think this fixes. But if my wrist is shaking, this does nothing for me. So this eliminates things from the equation that might affect your hand, but you're going to have to test it to see if that's where your tremors are. Mine are strictly in my wrist and elsewhere, and they're not really in my fingers. Trivia question, how many muscles do you have in your fingers? None, only tendons. I'll show you the same thing with the littler rubber bands. If you take these, I had one that would fit around my wrist, a little, yeah, it's a little tight. I get worried about, you know, telling people to put a rubber band around their wrist that might cut off blood circulation but it certainly works in terms of pulling those fingers back. Um, again, I've tried one finger, two finger, even three fingers, they had no impact on it for me. And it's always on the painting hand to try to eliminate those factors. So that's the rubber band method. I really looked around trying to find any way that I could steady my hand or produce better results. I noticed that I could never paint a straight line. Left, right, up, down, any direction, I couldn't paint. I always say I can't draw, a lot of us can't draw and I couldn't get a straight line. So I looked around at how to draw a straight line and then I found videos on shaky hands for calligraphers. Calligraphers, you know, those people that draw those really nice looking letters and stuff like that. There are plenty of videos out there about them practicing drawing and painting with their little brush pens. And it was a nice little resource for me to see how they control things. And the one suggestion they had was to, if you're trying to do straight lines, is pull toward yourself, do this, okay? And so, when I'm painting, if there's anything that I can, I will turn the miniature and do this. That's natural for me. I can do straight lines now. So I'm bracing my fingers. I've got my elbows on the table. I'm fairly stable. I can do straight lines like this. For example, when you're trying to do eyes like this, go like that or, or tilt it like this. And I aim directly at my sternum, not my shoulder, not my heart, not my left shoulder, nothing like that. I literally try to point that thing straight at my torso in the middle. And then I just go straight line with my brush slightly off from that angle and it works like a charm. So pull toward yourself. If every stroke is pulling toward yourself, you might get some improvement that way. Now you know how to brace your hands and what positions you can sit in to get better painting and pulling brush strokes toward yourself might help you get better control. What you need is a way to get your arms and wrists out of the equation. And my new invention is Mr. Brick. It's a brick. That's all it is. Two years ago, I lived next door. They were rebuilding this house. I had gotten acquainted with the landlord, the owner. His name is John. Um, and I just realized one day, I know what I need. I need something to support my hands better or differently than the elbows with my hands waving out in the air. So I came downstairs, came over while they were working, and I said, hey, John. He said, what? And I said, can I have a brick? And he gave me a look and was like, yes. And I said, thanks, took a brick and left. 
And what I did was I brought it back to my painting station, wrapped it in a towel, and said it like this. And I went, done. So this was it. My hands were up. My elbows weren't on the table. My hands were braced on the table, and I wasn't hunched over. I did wrap it in a towel. I tried wrapping it in a mouse pad, but the edge was too sharp. It didn't work. So I literally took a hammer and banged off the front edge. This right here. And I set it down with the towel wrapped around it and went, oh, that works. This is magical. I know it's a brick, but I refer to it as a support block because it doesn't have to be a brick in particular. But you can see what I'm doing is my hands are on a flat surface, but the, the wrists are on this rounded part right here. Tables are too low to paint on, in my opinion. I've looked at artists' tables, drawing tables, architects' tables, all that kind of stuff, but they're all just a slant. And I was like, what am I going to do? Let go of the miniature and have it roll down? Where do my paints go? It doesn't work. So I want it lifted up, but not the whole table. I just want my painting surface and the area where my hands are resting lifted up, like with a brick. The reason why I chose a brick was it's portable in a strange way. It's one of the most portable things in the world. But it's so heavy, it doesn't move. I can lean on it. It is not going to tilt over. It's not going to slide or anything like that. When I use this, I just put my wrists here, put my miniature in my hand, pick up my brush, and nothing's moving except for my fingers on my painting hand and, of course, my neck and my leg. They're always moving. So that's the magic trick. A support block. A brick works fine. This is a British brick. I'm sure that American bricks and bricks around the world are different shapes, but you get the idea. Big heavy object, rounded surface in front, flat top, about four to six inches up, um, and then you can start painting. And it really reduced a lot of things. My guess is that people who have the tremors in the little fingers that cause the big fingers to shake, not mine, which is in the wrist, would get would benefit mostly from rubber bands and not from this, because if your little finger is shaking, here, it's not going to stop. This brick isn't going to help at all. But for the wrist tremors, this seems to work really well. All right, so try that, and it's virtually free. I'm not going to tell you how much a brick costs. But this wouldn't be a crafting channel if I didn't try to build something better. This is Mr. Brick. I thought in the tradition of Pac-Man, where Pac-Man was a good game, but Ms. Pac-Man was better, I built Ms. Brick. So here she is, Ms. Brick. You've got the flat area up here where you can set miniatures, like this. This nice little sloped edge, which has been rounded. This front flat area, which is where you can put your hands in a variety of positions. This is mouse pad material, the upside down part. I didn't want the front soft, smooth side. I wanted something where my hands don't easily slip. The same material is on the bottom of it. And it's held on with some two-sided sticky tape, which is apparently the stickiest stuff in existence. There's a hole here for tools and another one up front holding other tools. There's a pad here that I use to put plasticine in to stick tooth, to, toothpicks and needles and pins in and whatever. Um, there's a little hook here on the side. You can put more hooks, but I just want something I could do this with. Back here, I put a paintbrush rack. Here's the other side of Ms. Brick, and the trick is that there's holes here. I have a problem with sharp knives, and I don't know how, where to store them. Do I store them point down, sideways? What What is the safest way? And for me, the safest way is in a hole in the side. Uh, if you look at the top here, there's a lip around the edge to prevent small objects from rolling off. And then the, the front sort of lip is the mouse pad material. This is what I used to paint on. I designed it. I drew up pictures. I sketched stuff out quite extensively, including the angles of the slope and all these other kinds of things. And then I asked a friend of mine, JT, to come over to because he's very crafty. He actually does stuff for a living. I invited him over to ask him if he could help with some of the basics for it. And he said, I'll do it. So he built the whole thing except for the paint rack. JT's a great friend. Couldn't ask for a better guy to help me out. He's helped me out before. This was amazing. So thank you, JT. There may be a point to removing one hand altogether and not holding the miniature. He keeps bringing up alligator clips. So I bought this off of Amazon. Not very expensive. What you get here is a metal plate, a magnetized plastic base, two aluminum rods that go through it, and then the alligator clips up on top, which would hold miniatures, especially plastic ones. It shouldn't be any problem. The idea is then that you're supposed to be able to use an airbrush to spray them. I don't use an airbrush, but this would be great for holding little plastic miniatures and painting like that. My other thought is if I simply remove this, and I've got this copper rod, 
with the alligator clip. I could drill holes in Ms. Brick, st simply stick this in there, maybe even glue them in there, and then I would be able to brace my hands at the same time that the miniature is being held. Occasionally, I will set the miniature down on Ms. Brick, that is the holder. I'll set the holder down on it, so my left hand is really just pressing against Ms. Brick. Um, and then I'll paint like that, because it just takes everything out of the equation. So <clears throat> alligator clips may be the future. Hold the miniature in your hand and paint with your fingers. That is, don't hold your miniature with your fingers, if you can. See what works for you. I saw a video where a guy said the best way to paint miniatures is both elbows on the table, press your wrists together. It does not work for me. Breaking the wrist or bending it like that is just not comfortable and it's difficult. I have seen people do this, by the way. I've seen professionals and experts, display painters, where when you watch their hands, they're, they're, they pull this way back. I think it's probably better to not bend your wrist. Um, so if I'm out here like this, this works for me. But there's a point to be made that you get more support this way. So again, try it. I'm running out of tips, guys. Okay, number one rule of all. Don't take medical advice from YouTube. Rule number two, if you have tremors in your hand and you don't know why, talk to your doctor. There is effective treatment for essential tremors and other vari variations of tremors. If this video does well and people are interested, then I'll do a second video on the dimensions of Ms. Brick and how to build it and additional things you could do with it. And if that video does well, I have a third tool that I built. You can build it with two pounds or two dollars of materials from a DIY store, and maybe it'll work for you. Oh, my legs calmed down. Medicine must be kicking in. I'm going to say something about Parkinson's here. Parkinson's symptoms aren't painful. There's no throbbing or stabbing, but they are frustrating and scary. When the medicine wears off, my symptoms get worse. I stutter badly. My balance is off. I've fallen down the stairs twice and been injured. It's debilitating. Without medicine, I would probably be in care. As it is, I'm mentally competent and physically capable. But we need more research. So I set up a little fundraiser for this video. Look, I don't have a Patreon. Or I don't have an Amazon wish list. I don't have a Kickstarter or anything for you to give me money. I don't need money. Parkinson's is considered an incurable disease. It's idiopathic, meaning they don't know the cause. They don't know why it happens. It's not genetically related. It's not diet. It's not something you are exposed to, they have no idea. There will not be a cure for Parkinson's in my lifetime, but there is already effective treatment and there will be more effective treatment as we go along, including stuff supported by the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. The physical symptoms of Parkinson's may be a little bit better known, but you don't probably know about the mental side effects. It often comes with anxiety, depression, hallucinations, dementia, a lot of other things. About 75% of people with Parkinson's end up with dementia. A neurologist said to me, Alzheimer's starts with dementia and leads to Parkinson's-like physical symptoms, and Parkinson's starts with physical symptoms and generally leads to dementia. If you want to help, donate. So we come to the end of the video and the point where you would expect me to say, I hope this helps someone. And it's true, I do. That's the main reason why I did this. I collected all this stuff for other people. But also, I hope I missed something. I hope I missed some tool or method that will help me get better control over my symptoms. And I don't mean something fake, I mean something scientific. So I hope someone can post a technique or a tool that I've never heard of. And don't say yoga. My neurologist says that I may get brain surgery next year, which would make me like my hero, Simone Yetch. She's the queen of the crazy robots. But if I do get brain surgery, I'm gonna ask him if I can live stream it. I'll put it on YouTube, I don't have any problem with that. Best wishes. I hope everything works for you. If you do have a friend or someone else that uh, says that they have problems with shaking hands, please forward this. Give them a link. Let them look at it. And if you would like to, please donate. Bye. Thank you.